Hey YouTube, one of the best electric Pokemon in the GBL is getting a shiny tomorrow. So I'm going to start going over these events because a lot of people have said, um, you know, it's great to put out two teams every week, every day. But like these events are when you should be hunting Pokemon. But I need a sort of analysis of what Pokemon to hunt and why. Um, so let's look at this uh, event. So we'll go over the event details and then we're going to go focus on the Pokemon in the event. Um, and which ones you should be focusing on if you want um good gbl pokemon in the great league and ultra league so the event starts tomorrow thursday july 25th at 10 a.m uh and it goes until tuesday at 8 p.m so event bonuses i uh, one of the i mean togedemaru everyone who's been around this channel knows they love togedemaru playing in the great league uh but i was looking at the event bonuses i'm like okay additional candy xl for successfully catching pokemon for trainers 31 and up increased chance for trainers levels 31 and up to receive xl candy uh, for successfully catching Pokemon with nice throws or better. So, uh, XL candies are very, very tough to get. Or candy XL. So, <laughs> there's XL candies, which are the the items that drop um, that can be used on any Pokemon. Candy XL are Pokemon specific, XL candy specific to that Pokemon. So, if you catch a Togedemaru, uh, you will get the XL candies in the Togedemaru that. But still. Um, Whenever you can get XL candies for catching, it's a or candies XLs for catching, it's a great opportunity. And three times catch Stardust. So, in of itself, if you're not focusing on GBL and if you're focusing on new shiny XL candies and three times Stardust, this is a great event just straight out bonuses wise. Um, but let's look at the encounters. We have A Sandshrew, Magnemite, uh, Pineco, Nosepass, Aeron. Beldum, Bronzer, Pharaoh Seed, Galarian Stunfisk, and Togedemaru. Uh, all with the, if you're lucky, you might encounter a shiny. So it looks like everything has a shiny here. Some trainers might even encounter Onyx, Scyther, Skarmory, and Clink. So looks like every single thing has a uh, uh, shiny if you're interested in that. And the one stars, you know, you got a lot of what's in the wild except Ponyard is a different one here. And then. Scissor, Mawel, Agron, so some evolutions of the ones that are in the wild, um, and then Mawel there. Field research task, um, Beldum, Clink, Togedemaru, you can search, um, I, I usually just go to Google and search Pokemon Go tasks, like Leak Duck and others, other sites have what the tasks are for the event, so you can check those out. Time research, um, uh, complete time research to earn a magnetic lure, XP, and encounters with events themed Pokemon. So I'm hoping that this is free. Uh, they're giving you a magnetic lure because for Pokemon like um, Magnemite, to get to Magnezone, you need the magnetic lure on a stop to evolve it to the Magnezone. So that is why they're giving you that, I'm assuming for free. Collection challenges, Pokestops, and if you want to buy some from the Pokestore. Okay, so what do we have here? We have... Um, I could just put in steels, but eh, I can't put in steels because it's it's kind of chill. Let's put in steels to start with, and I'll explain the great steels in themselves. And then there's some evolutions that maybe you want. Um, but here are the main steels. So now <laughs> you're like, why do you love Togedemaru so much when it's not even highly ranked? So it's ranked 73. So if you're in the top 100, um, honestly, not even 100. I think viable, there's meta Pokemon that are going to be good no matter what. And then I think there's viable Pokemon up until range, realistically, like rank 120, 130, that are still very, very viable. So, example, Togedemaru at 73, Magnezone at 100, Ferrothorn at 111, all very, very viable Pokemon. Oops, uh, let me let me back this up a little bit so you can see here. Uh, all very viable Pokemon in the 100 plus range. So again, I like using it because um, it at the time answered uh, a lot of the issues that I, a lot of the meta Pokemon that came up, like Skarmory, Mantine, stuff like that. However, Gligar, Quagsire, and stuff like that now make it a little bit more difficult to run, which is why you're not seeing me use it as much anymore. Uh, but there is a bunch of steals on this list, some in the uh, event that you should focus on. So the first one is, if you don't have a good Skarmory yet, um, Skarmory was available if you're lucky in the wild. 
right? Some trainers may even encounter a Skarmory and then it is in raids. So raids don't give you the mo most optimal IVs. So if you do not have a Skarmory, definitely try to get one in the wild. It is very, very strong. It is ranked number four in the Great League. Um, very, very strong, easy to build. Actually, what we're going to do, we're going to just quickly go over like how to team build. They're going to recommend Quagsire, Swampert, yes, Whiskash, all the Mud Boys. It's, it's the oldest pairing in, <laughs> in GBL, essentially, was Swampert and Skarmory. Um, just because they really handle each other's weaknesses. Skarmory is weak to electric, and your Mudboy will resist electric. Your Mudboy double weak to grass, and um, Swampert will, uh, sorry, and Skarmory double resist grass, right? So it's weak to annual weak to fire here, and your Mudboy resists fire, right? So it's just a very, very easy core to build, one that is still used to this day. Skarmory now most, mostly used with Whiskash and Quagsire. So if you do not have a Skarmory yet, definitely go. Galarian Stunfisk is an interesting one. So Galarian Stunfisk is available in the wild for everyone. It is ranked 25. I, much like Registeel now, rarely, rarely see Stunfisk. In fact, with Registeel number two, there's no reason to run Stunfisk anymore um, when you have like a much quicker charging nuke in Registeel with, I think, a little more bulk. So Stunfisk has like almost completely gone away. And why is that? Well, again, look at the meta. Your meta is a lot of Mud Boys, Wishcast, Quagsire, Swampert. It is even your flyers now cause you a little bit of problems because you have you have Gligar with Dig, which can hit super effective. And even Skarmory, which resists every single move, like because it's neutral to Rock Slide, it still takes quite a lot to take it out. And a couple Brave Birds actually does put you like in the red if not take you out so and then annihilate is everywhere right so between annihilate the mud boys gligar and that registeel has disappeared and then registeel light and stunfisk has dis disappeared so is it worth getting yes again i'm still a bit surprised how high it is ranked um given the meta but you know what? maybe maybe i'm wrong maybe i should adjust my thought process around Stunfisk because right now I know a lot of people are having trouble like there's obviously a lot of people who've hit legend already but I've someone in the comments mentioned that like oh yeah a lot of twitch streamers a lot of previous legend are still hovering around 2500 and I'm wondering if it's just like people are so reliant on the same meta all right for alligators out there now too so that's just like an issue too but so is Bastidon, Shadow Vic, and Wiggly right so Stunfisk probably does have some play but we just haven't thought about it too much um steelix as you can see is at number 40 so steelix um onyx if you are lucky you can get it in the encounters um and then steelix is in three star rays if you just want to go straight for it there so steelix was a very strong pokemon um for a while there um and then they nerfed breaking swipe so the thing with steelix is you basically it has that sort of like unique, not unique, but like ground steel typing, which was kind of helpful in this meta until the mud boys and everything took over. But what you had was that breaking swipe, which had a hundred percent chance of lowering your attack. So you can just like use your bulk, uh, dragon tail breaking swipe down, uh, that. So as you can see now, the recommended Musa is psychic fangs and crunch still ranked at number 40. And even this in the shadows at 58, um, and it gets by because it is very, very bulky and having the psychic fangs to lower the opponent's defense or yeah you can just like lower the opponent's defense and just go dragon tail or like crunch gives you a little more harder hitting move with some coverage um and potentially still lowers your opponent's defense um so it can be still comboed well again i think there's other pokemon that i probably use ahead of steelix but it is one pokemon that especially in limited cups um you, got, you also need to think about like Yes, these, this is the open Great League, but what about Limited Cups? And there's, so Steelix and Limited Cups is usually pretty strong. Um, so definitely, if you don't have an Onyx yet, I would search for a Steelix. Ferrothorn, was Ferroseed on here? Ferroseed is on here. Uh, so Ferrothorn, uh, on hit, low as a Steel, but probably high as a Grass, just because Grass is generally bad. Eh, kind of the same spot. Grass is just rough for typings here. Um, but what makes Ferrothorn pretty unique is just its typing. That grass steel only picking up two weaknesses. Double weak to fire 
and then that steel picks up a fighting weakness. But look at those resistances. Double resist grass, resist water, resist steel, resist rock, resist psychics, poison, normal, fairy, electric, dragon. That looks like the meta to me, right? Um, you have a bunch of waters. You got some steels. You got fighters, which is, sorry, your weakness there. But you got dragons, which you resist, right? So, I mean, you can't really throw anything at dragons with the grass move, but um, there, it it really gets behind a lot of its um, typing. And then bullet seed power whip is like a great combo. And then you can, just, whether you want to do flash cannon, mirror shot, or thunder is your second move, just up to you. Um, but definitely a Pokemon worth getting. And in one that 100% in limited metas is very, very strong. In fact, if you watch the Great League remix, when some of these fighters like Annihilate and Medi and Vigoroth were banned, um, Ferrothorn just jumped up uh, and Skeletors was banned, right? So you had all these like fires and fighting banned. Ferrothorn jumped to the top and everyone was using it. So Ferrothorn, Ferrothorn, definitely one worth getting. Um, there's not much else in the Great League that I would focus on. In the Ultra League, let's just jump to the Ultra League here. In the Ultra League, um, so Skarmory is ranked 22. You need a Hundo and you need all the Excels um, to get Skarmory. Is I have not used Skarmory in the Ultra League, um, nor would I probably. Um, I just think that there's better flyers in the. I would honestly in the Ultra League, I prefer using Pidgeot, and I prefer using Talonflame. Both also level 50s, um, but just have sort of like better coverage and then uh so i prefer using those as flyers but it's an option if you want it but for other steels that i like using obviously if you have a registeel if you have a glaring if you don't have a registeel glaring stemfisk is a fine substitute um so if you don't have like you do need like a ton of xls i'm still walking mine after six months so if you don't have the xls for registeel definitely use glaring stemfisk it is pretty good in the ultra league and then there's your steelix steelix same thing it was better with breaking swipe but still 31 37 ranked worth that ranking especially with like giratinas and stuff it's bulky um can handle like giratinas and stuff um uh, other dragons plus just um again that unique sort of steel ground typing helps out a little bit as well um so definitely one worth building looking at there ferrothorn's at 129 uh, again grass is kind of tough and it's even more tough in the ultra league when there is a lot of steals like there's there's a lot more steals at play here in the ultra league um but there's also a lot more dragons in the ultra league right because you have like giratina zygarde guzzlord gudra uh dragonite dragology like como there's a lot of more useful dragons in the great league which again you resist all the dragon moves some of these don't have dragon moves they have like giratina has claws and stuff which makes it even worse but then you don't really have a lot to throw at them so it's a little trickier from that perspective um in terms of other steals on this list, there's Magnezone a little lower at 141 that you could potentially get. Um, I'm trying to think of like the evolutions here. So Steelix for sure. Scyther. Scyther's kind of like a... I don't even think it's ranked that high. Yeah, 388. Probably not worth going. I think it's more of like a, just a spice pick. Um, and then Bronzong. I don't think it has a lot of play either. But 263, yeah. I don't think it has a lot of play. All of these steals probably won't have a lot of play. Oh, it's an a Sand Slash. So a Sand True evolves to a Sand Slash, which is one of the top ranked um, st uh, steals. Um, so 93. So it's got that unique steel ice typing. And that ice is so beneficial in this meta. Lots of flyers. Um, lots of dragons, stuff like that. So a Sand Slash. You do, do you need Shadow Claw on it? Yes and no. Um, I find Shadow Claw is generally better, but I've gone against Powder Snows and have just as much difficulty going against them. So, um, do you need a do legacy move Shadow Claw? I think it's slightly better, but I think if you don't have anyone and just run a Powder Snow one, you, that is just as fine. Um, and that is all on this list that's going to be useful in the Ultra League. And the only thing I'll go to now is the Master League. Um, and there's only one that you need to worry about, and that is Metagross. Um, okay. Ranked 57. Open Master League, not as useful. 
uh, Master Premier, where the, all the legends are banned, very useful. Plus, it's one of the best raid attackers with Bullet Punch Meteor Mash. So if you want one of the best steel raid attackers, it is definitely worth getting. So this is one where, again, Togedemaru as the shiny... Again, I, know, I don't shiny hunt, but I saw the title. I'm like, oh yeah, that's interesting. And then you start looking at the bonuses and like, oh, excels and three times dust. And then definitely some strong um, Pokemon for GBL. I think it's worth covering. And I'll start covering these more because I think it will help with um, just focusing on help appealing to a larger audience, but also help focus on um, not having to do like 14 teams a week, <laughs> which is a lot. And then people will just get bored with teams after a while. So that is the event. Um, yeah, I think uh, it's a good event. Again, the problem, <laughs> it's not a problem, but um, if you don't have, if you've been in this game for a while, you have everything here, right? I have every single one of these Pokemon evolution in a good IV for, no, I don't know about good IVs, but workable for Great League and Ultra League. Um, and the only thing that I'd be doing if I cared about this was shiny hunting these Pokemon. But again, I'm not a shiny hunter, so it's not like I'm gonna go and focus on that. Um, but if you're new to the game, yes. If you're new to the game, what should you be focusing on? And there's really only five you should be focusing on. Ace Antru. Um, Magnemite to a certain extent to get a good Magnezone. Um, Beldum, if you don't have one yet, just to get that Metagross from Master League and Raiding. Ferroseed, Galarian Stunfisk, Togedemaru, and then uh, Skarmory, if you don't have that yet, so six. Those are the only six that realistically, if you only have, a, can only have, like focus on a few, those are the ones you want to focus on for um, GBL. So that's it. Let me know if these are useful and let me know if you want me to do anything else um, with these um sort of covering the events and that is it so good luck uh hunting and i'll see you guys in the next one